Governor Harding. Yeah. Uh, let's let's wait for another minute then. Okay. Yeah. This is Anita Inander. How are you? I'm well. Do you know if our uh, interim city manager is planning to pop in? Uh, I don't think at this meeting. I think he's going to go to the planning commission tomorrow. Okay. That's yeah, he I was at finance last night. I wasn't sure if he was up for three nights in a row. Yeah, that's a lot. That's a lot. So. Yeah. Thanks. No problem. No problem. All right. Looks like... Um, Hardy made some uh, trouble attending, so maybe he will be late uh, joining us. But this starts since it's been a few minutes um, past seven. So why don't we just start since we sh looks like we should have enough. Um, so uh, let me begin. Um, welcome to today's uh, Design Review Commission meeting uh, Los for Los Altos. Uh, today's Wednesday, January 20, um, 2021. Uh, before we start the uh the meeting i would like to establish a quorum so i will roll call each commissioner uh on the order i see on the screen um commissioner kirik uh, here commissioner blockers here commissioner bishop here okay and myself we have four out of five commissioner uh, present, so we do have a quorum. <clears throat> Going down to the list um, on the agenda, uh, the, our first item on the consent calendar is uh, the Design Review Commission me meeting minutes from January 6th meeting. Um, does anyone have any question for uh, for the um, last uh, meeting minutes? Okay, so if no one has a question, who would like to make a motion? Uh, David, you want to like, uh, give a try? Yeah, just uh, make a motion to approve the minutes from our last meeting and I don't have uh, yeah. For January twentieth. For meeting for, for January sixth. For, for January sixth. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. Who would like to second? I'll, I'll second. second. Yeah. All right. So I will um, call each commissioner when I call your name uh, to vote. Please state uh, your vote. Commissioner um, Pirik? Aye. Commissioner Blackus? Aye. Commissioner Bishop? Aye. And myself, aye. Motion approved, four to zero. Uh, moving down the list, um, we have um, our second items, uh, which is uh, SC 20, 0020 for 1485 Railwood Drive. Um, like to have the staff uh, present the project, please. Xiao? Okay, one second. Sorry. 
Oh, one sec. Share my screen one second. Sorry about that. Good, good evening, Chair Ma. Commissioners, the project before you tonight is a design review application for one new second story window along the front elevation. This is a, a aerial a photo of the neighborhood and the red uh, property is the subject site. Um, this is the, uh, the site plan of the existing property. It is an existing two-story structure. Uh, that was constructed in 1988 and approved by uh, an architectural site commission committee um, 22 years ago. The applicant is proposing the addition of uh, one new window in an attic area facing the street frontage along Redwood Drive. Um, this is conveyed in the elevation drawing uh, on the screen above, which shows the clouded area and the location of the new window that will be facing um, the front elevation. The, um, staff uh, in the staff report did not raise particular concerns regarding uh, privacy windows. Traditionally, windows that are uh, placed and oriented towards a public right of way, uh, staff police does not create uh, an unreasonable privacy impact. Uh, and uh, staff did recommend approval of the project. Staff did receive one uh, comment uh, or, or comments from one uh, resident. Uh, they were forwarded to you. They did raise concerns that the staff report should have acknowledged that the applicant originally proposed the removal of the addition of two windows. However, as the commission is aware, uh, staff does provide uh, comments during a completeness review period. And during that period, staff highlighted the importance of addressing the rear window. And in response to staff's concerns regarding privacy impacts, the applicant removed the rear window, uh, which resulted in only one window being proposed for this structure. In addition, the resident raised concerns regarding condition number three superseding um, and potentially allowing a rear deck to be built. Uh, as permitted, as required under 1476090 of the ordinance, a design review application is only valid for a two year period. The original application that permitted a rear deck on the back of the house in 1988 expired in, in 1990. And so the applicant would not be permitted to build a rear deck since it is not permitted under the ordinance. Uh, this concludes staff's presentation unless there are any questions. Thank you. I'll try that. All right, thank you, Xiao. Um, Excuse me, any... um, Chairman Ma, this is Sam. Uh, I'm calling on my phone. Um, I could not get in on, on my iPad, so I just, I've come in by phone. All right, thank you. Thank you for, uh, um, for coming. So, all right. So you, you we, we cannot see you uh, on the video, just a phone. Okay, that's fine. No, um, I'm still trying, but uh, I'm, I'm on the phone at the moment. That's fine, that's fine. All right, thank you. Okay, um, thank you, Sean. So uh, any question from, um, Commissioner for Xiang, for the staff? No? Yeah. Okay. All right. <clears throat> so um, let's see if the uh, applicant or the architect designer want to uh, speak. Uh, yeah, I'm the project uh, designer for this. Can you state your name? Uh, my name is Kui San. Okay. By Mac Design. So the project at Sun presented to the uh, staff and the commissioner that uh, results, the final results, only one single window facing the street. And we think that would not affect any privacy to the neighbor on the level on the right. So we just hope that commission will approve this. Okay. All right. Thank you. Um, commissioners, any question for the um the architect or the designer applicant? None. No. None. Okay. All right. Um, all right. So if that's the case, um, let's open for um, um, to the public. Um, 
Is anyone from the public would like to speak? Please yeah. state your name. Yeah, please state your name. Um, and yeah, go ahead. Okay. My name is Peter Ho, HOA. I live at uh, 2245 Sycamore Court, uh, which is in the rear of the uh, public property. Can I speak now? Yeah, go ahead, go ahead. You have, yeah, you, go ahead. Uh, I'll read, read from it. Dear Design and Planning Commission members, thank you for providing time tonight to us. As we steward the upcoming remodel of 1485 Redwood Drive, we would like to use our allotment time a lot of times to, vote, to give voice to two main concerns that arise from the proposed project. 1485 Redwood Drive is at a significantly higher elevation relative to its backyard neighbor, the 2245 Sycamore Court, and its side yard neighbor, 1525 Vineyard Drive. In that context, we ask for sufficient due diligence to consider the safety and privacy of surrounding neighbors. With respect to safety, if or when the city consider getting permission to allow a new structure such as an ADU on the property that sits on a significantly higher elevation than the neighboring property, we request the city consider the weight of the new structure and its effect on the underlying soil. In such situation, ADU permit itself may need to include requirement to have foundation experts, such as a civil engineer to certify safety or to recommend required safeguards to keep the new ADU and immediate neighbor safe. Some examples of adverse events that may lead to failure of soil underneath the ADU are a slow moving event such as soil erosion caused by faulty drainage system or sudden event such as earthquake. Moving on to privacy, we want to note that due to the elevation differences, historically, the Design Commission gave consideration to the privacy of its neighbor with respect to not cons considering any second floor rear elevation window that can open any parts of the backyard or a, a second floor deck that may infringe on multiple privacy. The neighborhood has historically respected the privacy of each neighbor's backyard. I think that is something that is sadly the principle going forward as well. We appreciate that the revised plan does not contain a new second floor rear window. We thank the commissioner commission for hearing our concern. We trust that the city of Los Altos will continue to act as stewards of the historical value, value of safety privacy, sunshine that we all cherish. We look forward to welcoming our new neighbors to 1485 Redwood Drive. Please include this letter, which I will be sending in, in tonight's meeting notes. We thank the commissioner for your time. Thank you. All right, um, thank you. Um, <clears throat> just for your information, um, uh, we, our design review commission only reviewed the, the two-story uh, uh, house or a second floor addition. Uh, as far as ADU, um, usually uh, if they follow the city's zoning ordinance, they don't go through us. Uh, Quido, if you want to chime in, you know, you can just um, uh, chime in any time about the ADU, but uh, typically we don't review um, uh, the okay, so ADU. Can I just comment? I, I wasn't even uh, thinking about the ADU when I first raised the concern about privacy. But then I look at the ADU, at the full extent of the ADU, it really focuses on the distance from the property line and so on. But nowhere do I see where if, if you get very close to the property line, there's a significant difference in elevation that I think that concern, I'm raising it not necessarily for myself alone, but for 
any situation like that, it's better to prevent that situation from happening than, you know, if you raise that, if you look, look at that special situation and take some preventive measure, I think the better way of approaching, right now, all the, that the, the document focus on is distance from the border. If it's I, I, no problem. If yes, it's, um, right? I, that's what I just want to stay, make that point. All right, all right, thank you. Uh, point taken, but um, you know, I think this is a separate issue from our design review. As ADU, I believe you can um, submit your 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 comments and requests directly to the uh, the city's development um, uh, permit center, uh, such a planning and building department. Um, oh, so, I have a yes. meeting on this to, to so so uh, uh, Peter, this is Guido. Can you can you hear me? Yes, I can. It looks like you froze up there. Uh, we're the oh hi Shirley how are you how are you so uh, we're really not here to talk about an ADU actually by law the DRC is really not supposed to really touch on that issue uh, unless it's very certain circumstances so the focus of tonight's hearing is, and the way it was agendized by the Brown Act is to really talk about the the window which I know you had expressed concern about so I just I just wanted to kind of get us back to what's on the agenda because by the Brown Act we really should just focus on what's on what's what's on the published agenda. So. I also realize that the state is mandating that we do this and I'm in, you know I'm fine with that. I think in their in their issuing of the order or whatever they do not consider places like Los Altos where there's many situations where the elevation is significantly different and that is a problem. And I think that should be, you know, uh, as a normal process to review that. I don't think the state will ob object to saying, you still allow them to do it, but they need to take the correct precaution process. Uh, uh, P Peter, it, it's probably better if I explain the ADU stuff maybe offline, I'll, I'll be glad, but okay. it, uh, yeah, it, uh, unfortunately, um, there's been a lot of state laws that have been adopted and cities have basically lost their control to a certain extent over the ADUs. And ADUs really are not supposed to be subject to a public meeting or hearing, which is this meeting here. So we're getting in a little bit of a touchy area in terms of the DRC kind of talk. To, uh, so yeah, it's probably best if I just explain to you and Shirley kind of kind of the ADU laws and all that. And, and like I said, the agenda is focused on the, oh, we on the window. We should we send a letter to Governor Brown to make uh, to? This is not to stop ADU from happening. Oh, goodness, I'm sorry. But uh, uh, Peter, I, I think yeah, just like what Guido said, you know, you should discuss either by uh, you know an appointment or a phone call with Guido separately. You okay. know, our DRC is not here. Um, it's not on our agenda, and then uh, we are. This is not our. Um, uh, responsible topic, you know, for the regular ADU uh, regulation. Yeah. Okay. All right. Okay. Okay. Thank you, Peter. Thank you, Shirley. Um, so I believe the commissioner may should not have any question for uh, the neighbors, right? I have a oh. question. I'm a neighbor. Oh, go ahead. Please uh, this, say your name and address. Uh, this is Catherine Leboyevich. I live at 2225 Sycamore Court. Um, a house down from uh, the Ho family. I did not receive any type of letter regarding um, any of the work at 1485 Redwood Drive, but I am a longtime uh, member of this neighborhood. Now, um, Catherine, I just want to- Catherine, this is Guido from the staff. What's your address? Because I'm taking meeting minutes. 2225 Sycamore Court. Okay. Thank you, thank you. You're welcome. And um, this also goes back to you, Guido. So I know you just uh, stated to Mr. Ho that um, tonight, this evening's agenda was not pertaining to the ADU, which is fine. Um, as a, just a neighbor, um, as somebody of the neighborhood, I have had a very difficult time finding what the agenda of this evening is about pertaining to this property, to tell you the truth. Um, I, um, 
printed out from the Design Review Commission. Am I still online? Yes. Hello? Yes, yeah. Go okay, ahead. Sorry. Yeah. Yeah. Um the the subject uh which was the subject for this evening. And I actually have a question regarding the conditions on page five. Perfect. Thank you, Guido. Oh, where how, why did that go away? Well, I was just trying to show the agenda. You, you had asked about the agenda, Catherine. Uh, yes, I was just about to scroll down and then it went away. But um, so if everybody has a copy of the agenda, the one that was available to me online, um, if we could look at the conditions, page five of it together. Sure. Because this is where my question is. Um, okay, so it just is general and it says it dates the expiration, et cetera, of the zoning code, fine. Approval of plans based on the materials received on September 17th, 2020, uh, modification of scope of work, et cetera. Number three, the conditions superseded. This is where I just think some of the wording and what's happening tonight, um, I, as a neighbor, want clarification on. These conditions shall be in addition to the conditions approved on March 29th, 1988. What are you saying was approved on March 29th of 1988? That's my question. Because something from March of 1988 should not have any value at this period of time. So, Hello? To the chair, did you want me to try to answer that question? Yeah, so, so, yeah that would be great. So, so uh, Catherine, usually what happens is people are given three minutes to speak and then you address your concerns or comments and then the chair will ask staff to clarify. So. Um, is that the, the gist of your comments or did you have additional questions or comments? No, that's pretty much it. You know, I want to know why something from 1988 when building permits only last a certain amount of time. Yeah. Okay. Uh, well, it, what is it from March of 1988? Okay. Uh, and if, if the chair would uh, yes. recognize Sean, Thank you. Sean can Thank answer. You. Yes. Okay. All right. Th thank you, Catherine. Yeah. Um, um, yeah, Quido or, or Sean, um, can you answer that question about that condition number three uh, related to the, um, the condition approved on March uh, 29, 1988? Go ahead, please. Thank you. Yeah, so the in intention behind adding that condition, which is a common addition that we add, is that is the, this new project is not supposed to nullify the previous conditions that were incorporated uh, for the project in 19, 1988. Although it was constructed, um, the intention is, is, is to add these conditions to the previous conditions. It doesn't mean that they can go back and rebuild a structure because that permit is expired, but it still does require that even though it was built, that they still have to comply with any original conditions that were in effect in 1988. So, for instance, if I can try to pull this up really quick. I can pull it up if you want. I'm just trying to go to share real quick. So, so as indicated, I think um, that this was like a site of control and these were conditions that were required. But the applicant shall work with the engineering and building departments to address the issue of on-site surface drainage. So, um, Merely because we're proposing windows doesn't mean that we're now eliminating all these conditions. These are still in force. So if the applicant at some point between 1990 or 1988 and now modified the drainage on the site and still didn't comply with surface drainage requirements, we could require them to maintain that on the existing site for the existing structure. Same thing as a requirement for the installation of the 10 gallon size if, if, ever, if ever these were modified and we received a complaint, we could require them to implement what was required 
back in 1988. Same thing as our current conditions stipulate a whole series of requirements at times. And if we have modifications to conditions later on, we still enforce the original conditions that are applied. And, and those are intended typically to address stormwater drainage, privacy issues, and other issues. And that's the intention behind it. It's not to create a, a way to build a, a new uh, deck because that permit has expired. And so they're not allowed to build a permit. They'd have to come back to the Design Review Commission for that. I, I have a question, if you don't mind. <coughs> I'm actually concerned, very concerned about the drainage situation because- they... um, Wait, are we, oh, hold on, hold on. Okay, Shang, I think, yeah, uh, Peter, can you, can you stop? Let's, let's have a, um, uh, Shang, Shang, have you finished your- um... Yes, I have, thank you. Okay. Um, and let's go back to Catherine. Catherine, do you have any question for our uh, staff in response to your, your, your concern? Um, thank you for sharing that letter, Sean. I have not been able to receive it from the archive at the city. They were not willing to share anything, which was also frustrating. Um, I just want to make sure that a conditions, again, that there is no rear window in that it wasn't called just the design review at that time that there is no rear window into the hose yard or a deck that's going to be built did you Hello? wish me to respond to that chair ma yes yes um so we're here today only to review what was submitted and that is one window along the front elevation. Uh, although the applicant is in, a, in his original submittal proposed a rear window, the planning staff, as we do when reviewing projects, review projects based on compliance with development standards and compliance with the design guidelines. The design guidelines discuss issues of privacy. We raise these issues during our initial review with the applicant and based, our, with, based on our comments, the applicants eliminated the rear window. So although it's part of the initial submittal, it is not part of this application before you today with the Design Review Commission. So if, since there are no, there's no rear window on the application tonight, there is no window proposed on the rear, only along the front elevation. Thank you. All right. Mm -hmm. All right, thank you, Shang. Uh, yeah, so yeah, this is to, uh, to assure you that the plans I'm looking at right now for tonight's um, the agenda on this second floor, only the front window has been proposed and it's under our review, only the front window. I just wanna make sure that uh, you know, the, all the public, the neighbors understand that only the front window has been proposed and under our review, okay? okay. So uh, Peter, do you have any question uh, related to the, uh, tonight's yeah. agenda? In my in the, my earlier letter to the uh, the city, we were concerned also about the drainage because they moved they moved the pool and the dirt around. And in the 1988, said something about they need to make sure that the drainage is okay. Is that apply to this uh, new application that the new resident is making? That you know we. Okay, right. Peter, we, we don't have any information about the drainage on the, the, the plans we, we are reviewing. So please, um, you know, um, talk to the uh, Guido and follow up with the building. And I believe the drainage, um, uh, grading and drainage are um, actually reviewed by another department, Public Works and Engineering. So Guido can give you more information on, on that. And so um, please talk to him separately. Uh, after tonight's um, meeting. Okay, so um, if we don't have any um, any other comments from the public, I'm gonna close the um, public comments. Okay, all right then. Yes. All right, um, let's move on, public comments closed. Let's move on to uh, discussion um, from uh, among the commissioner on this, uh, this agenda. Anyone have a, Want to start talking about it, or we are ready to um, make a motion? If we don't have any question, anyone can go ahead and make a motion. 
I move that we approve SC20-0020, the window edition at 17 or 1485 Redwood Drive. Okay. For the conditions and findings in the staff report. All right. I second. Okay. Second. Oh, okay. Um, when I call your name to vote, uh, please, um, I'll just call by the, the order I see on my screen. Uh, let's start with Commissioner Blockers. Aye. Yes. Commissioner Kerr. Aye. Commissioner, okay. Commissioner Bishop. Aye. Commissioner Harding. Aye. Okay, and myself. Aye. So, um, motion approved. Five to zero. Thank you. Um, going down our list, uh, we're just going to have uh, agenda number three, discussion um, about the, uh, the, AD, the ADU discussion with DRC. Yes, so uh, Chair Ma, the, the commission asked for uh, some written instruction from the city attorney. Um, I did forward that on uh, to the commission. Um, you know, if you ask an attorney to write something, there's a lot of legalese and whatnot. Can you guys hear me or? Yes, yes, yes. Yeah, I, but you've got some background going on too, or someone so, has some someone, background. Someone's background, yeah. Okay, uh, let, me, let me mute everybody else. Um, so, Good. you know, yeah, whenever you get something written by the attorneys, you get a bunch of legalese. So uh, basically, I mean, we even touched on it tonight. Um, you know, if it's a detached ADU, which is more than likely what this commission will see, um, it's really not supposed to be uh, a, like a public hearing or a public item. It really is like a ministerial review by planning and building. If you meet the requirements in terms of height and the setback, then we're supposed to approve it. Um, later on in the memo, it did talk about um, if you go above 20 feet, or the ADU is part of the second floor, then that does fall under the purview of the DRC, like a normal second story addition. The only caveat, if you read the memo, was just basically that because it's supposed to be more like a ministerial review, if this committee does get a second story ADU, if it meets the requirements of the code that your jurisdiction is uh, limited, um, after the memo was uh, released, Commissioner Harding asked some follow-up questions of the city attorney, which I can forward everybody. Um, and I, I won't put words in Commissioner Harding's mouth, but basically, you know, he asked about the 10-foot setback that the council wrote into the ordinance. Um, basically, that's a voluntary thing. Uh, property owners have a right to the four-foot setback um, written into state law. But I thought the council was smart to add the provision that said, you know, the staff could voluntarily get the 10 foot setback if a property owner wants to do that. But that's purely a voluntary act. So that's so, uh, basically uh, my report out. Yeah, Guido, my, my question on that was, does, how would someone know about that unless it was part of kind of the early process at planning. Um, I was surprised to, when I finally read the statute to see that. And uh, if I was a homeowner and I saw that four feet was what I could get, I wouldn't even know that was an option uh, to do it more than that. Well, yeah, when I speak with customers, um, because you know the four foot can be controversial, I do point them to that part of the ordinance. And I believe the, other okay. staff, the staff planners are, you know, showing that, hey, you know, if you want to reduce neighborhood incompatibility, you can do this. But, you know, we always caveat with it is voluntary. So. Okay. So that's my report out, unless there's additional questions from the commission. We don't, no, I'm assuming that, that the city attorney or someone looks at anything that might be borderline for ADUs before it comes to the design review. 
Um, usually that's my job. I usually work with the staff planners to work. And then if there's something super tricky, then I do reach out to the city attorney, but, um, yeah. yeah. So, so we shouldn't really be having any, if much discussion about ADUs in front of us. Um, that that's more handled at the, you know, front desk level. Yeah, except for, like I said, with the caveat that if it's, if it's over 20 feet and it's a second story addition, which is under your guys' purview, when, we haven't had one yet. When that happens, then we'll have to have some more discussion uh, within the staff report and with the city attorney about how to frame it for the DRC. So. Great, thank you. Okay. All right, thank you, Guido. Um, and uh, agenda number four is still a DRC discussion topic with the uh, city council. That's upcoming, right? Yeah. Um, so at the conclusion, at, here, let me pull up my notes. Um, and we can. You have some background noise going on now. Someone does. Commissioner Carrick, I muted Commissioner Carrick. So, oh. um, just I think that was I think that was the background. <laughs> Juju. Hey, hey I, I muted myself. Uh, oh, okay. Not, <laughs> so don't don't think <laughs> I'm a bad person. Here. Sounds good. I'm muted, okay. Go okay. Um, so if the commit the DRC can see at the end of our uh, meeting, um, I did take some notes. Um, so February second is the meeting with the council and the different uh, commissions. So these were the the items that I heard loud and clear, and the commission can chime in. Um, Request to receive support from the city's public information officer to properly advertise the one story overlay district to the community, to have clear definition of what constitute a neighborhood in the zoning code for purposes of DRC review, um, to require applicants to conduct more community outreach as part of the development review process, and to consider amending the code to give applicants bonus square footage for the first floor of properties if they voluntarily agree, voluntarily agree to not build a second story addition. So those were the big takeaways that I took away. And if you, if you guys wanna modify or add them or however you wanna do that both prior to February 2nd or tonight. Yeah, the only thing I, I can you hear me? Am, am I yes. unmuted? Yes. Okay, I did add the element of um, one of the uh, DRC, uh, commissioners to be available for basically a conversation or a consult uh, on some of these things, particularly the second story, uh, to try to reduce the number of times that uh, projects aren't made aware uh, in where, where it's a two story coming into a one story. It, uh, the amount of time that it takes you and takes us and as we know many others to uh, to resolve that um, I thought some early uh, early attention with someone wanting to put uh, the first two-story house in a one-story neighborhood might be helpful okay so I, I gave that some thought so and you know you guys can chime in uh, you know, like San Jose has everything into council districts, right? So theoretically, Los Altos could break up the city into five DRC districts or whatnot. And, you know, you could evenly divide up the city among the however many 6,000 people in each district. So if an item were to come before the DRC, potentially a DRC member would be in charge of, let's say, one slice of the city and then that person would reach out to that individual DRC member. Anyway, that, that was kind of what I was, I don't know if you yeah. like that idea or not, or. That, that's, a, that's a good idea, the story, yeah. That's a, one a good option, yeah. So. Are we, are we uh, what do other, sorry. What do others think? I, I was kind of my thoughts, but what do other members think? Uh, I think that's one of the good options. Uh, another option is that, uh, you know, I, I believe on the, the, the first things, 
people when they gonna look up the city, the the ordinance, um, they gonna look up the city's website. They go to the planning or zoning map or something. So uh, my my suggestion is that um, you know maybe planning can consider uh, putting a notice on the city's um, planning web page, say something about you know uh, one story neighborhood or they have option uh, to uh, file uh, you know a, a, a petition for their neighborhood to become one story overlay something like that you know right. advertise from the city's website right yeah so I did put that as the first comment so mm -hmm. yeah yeah so Guido, are we or Chair Ma, are we looking for additional ideas here, or or is this it the list? Um, I believe this is the list. You you can you, you can yeah. Uh, well, so so other things that I think we've brought up numerous times and talked about. One is clearer direction to applicants about playhouses, play structures, so on and so forth. Uh, you know, so we don't end up in a situation we've seen a couple times now. Um, uh, clear uh, information to the public about, like we experienced tonight, what our role in the ADU review is. We spent a lot of time tonight talking about an ADU that wasn't even part of this submittal. So once again, getting that information out to the public that we don't deal with ADUs <laughs> would, you know, communicate that to the council so they give us some direction. Mm -hmm. And three, and probably the most uh, controversial issue we deal with, other than windows, is decks. Um, I think there should be, uh, and this is opening a can of worms, but maybe there should be discussion about decks, you know. The impact of decks on neighbors, what, you know, maybe we can limit decks in the future. Maybe the applicant to do a deck needs to do something in addition, or maybe they need consensus approval from surrounding neighbors prior to coming to the DRC with their deck. Because I can tell you, we've, I, I think all of us have heard more applicants and, you know, deck modification in the last you know, year or nine years that I've been on this commission, seven, excuse me, that decks are always a topic of conversation. So bringing that point to the council to, for consideration of maybe modifying that, um, you know, um, option in some way would be a good topic of discussion in my view. Okay. Um, so, uh, we do another question. I, I'm looking at the um, uh, legal department, uh, community development department um, memo that I got at least, City of Los Altos public meeting for the 2460 Foothill Boulevard uh, water tower. A water tower? Well, this is, this is, I got this, I, I, it says from you, it's it's from you to the legal department and it says, it says uh, Hal and Lori Nelson, 2460 Foothill Boulevard. Um, this is to design review commission public hearing will be held Wednesday, January 20th, 2021 at seven via conference call. Please go to the following and so forth. So, uh, and this was uh, published yeah. in the town crier. Yeah, that item got pushed out because they're they're not ready for DRC review. So. Oh, okay. Yeah. Yeah. So the I town went and tried to find the property. Oh, yeah, I went and I tried to find the property. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> most, most most cities only have like a. You know, you get the notice in within 14 days, and then it gets published 10 days before the meeting. The the town crier, we have to get it in like 23 days ahead of time for the variances. So, mm. so I was trying to help the customer out by at least putting the notice in and then they end up not being ready. So, yeah. So. That's quite a place <laughs> that. Uh... It's a beautiful property. So. Yeah. Okay, so hey, hey, Guido. I. Okay, Guido. 
Yeah. 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 The strengths. I, I want to come back to what Jude was talking about, the decks. Jude, could you clarify that? You're, you're talking a, a second story deck. Is that right? Uh, sorry. Yeah. Um, let me, let me, yeah, let me, that was uh, unclear. uh, well, yeah. yeah. So I can't tell you how many times we've discussed decks, size of decks, width, depth, Agreed. whatever. Yeah. And it's always, yeah. you know, the neighbors are, you know, concerned about privacy impact, sound impact, visual impact. So no, 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 yeah. I, I agree with you. I just wanted to make clear what you were discussing with second story, not a deck, which generally is just a deck right. on the ground. That was yeah. yeah. So yeah, Thank my my, yeah. my misspeaking. Anything above the first floor should that's considered a deck, terrace, whatever you, whatever term you want to throw at balcony, it. Balcony, right? We're balcony. All the words. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. So right. any of those right. things that are above the first floor. I think they should be scrutinized and there should be further, at least in my opinion, either further outreach by the applicant or further limitations or maybe some something that we disincentivize decks in general uh, in, in the city, given what we've seen here as a, a major concern of privacy impacts. Yeah. Um, okay. So I, I agree. Thanks. Yeah, I just um, wanted to make sure we were on the same page. That was all. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Jew, I actually, uh, uh, everyone, I actually have some uh, additional input about the deck. You know, when when we are reviewing, I agree with you that uh, this this deck come out second floor balcony or deck. They come out all the time, um, but for us to um, to see a clear picture, of course, we all visit the the property. But for us to see a better picture, um, I, I want to suggest that the uh, Guido and planning, um, maybe in the future, um, they can request a privacy, um, more information from the applicants. Uh, can, can someone mute the background? I still hear some background noise. Um, yeah, that's better. So. As, as part of the application on the drawing on the site plan, um, I, I've seen that uh, from other cities' jurisdiction, they request the applicant to, to uh, at least draw in the windows from the adjacent, you know, the right side and left side houses, ground floor windows, second floor windows, uh, and then also the, the, plan, the existing, uh, existing planting or privacy screening tree along the fence line, even on the other side of the fence, but close to the fence. So we have a better picture and doing the discussion, I think people can have a better picture to the, for the public to see and discuss about the impact. Sometime, you know, if we have a, sometimes it's just difficult to see it without those information. Okay. Yeah. Sounds good. Mm-hmm. So, so Mike, Michael, my, just saying, my, my point is to get this, this issue in front of the council, because mm -hmm. I think there's numerous mechanisms that we could do to help control decks. You know, one extreme would be just say, hey, we're not gonna allow uh, decks, second story decks in Los Altos going forward. You know, and there's nothing in our zoning code that would en entitle somebody to a deck. or you know, step down from that. If you do want a deck, maybe that square footage of the deck is counted against your FAR. So yeah, you can have the deck, but now you're penalized. So mm -hmm. there are ways to disincentivize people from coming forward and proposing these decks that continuously raise concern amongst all neighbors for numerous reasons. So that right from the get-go would shut down a lot of these requests that we see. Yeah, but uh, I'm not sure if that's uh, that's gonna be you know, applicable and fair to everybody. I mean, I, I have a, a deck on my own when I apply. I think it's a com based on a lot of factor communication to the neighbor. You know, when when I when I you know apply for my house seven eight years ago, uh, right. I'm not sure if you you you, you were on the yeah. on the commission. But I, I actually have a large deck, but I communicate with all my neighbors and done all the privacy. I think that it was pretty. Uh, you know, at the time it was pretty easy as long as you come in with a neighbor and 
and sincerely, you know, you you address all the neighbors' concern with the privacy screening. Um, so I, I think it 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 depends on uh, many many factors in, in you know case by case. Yeah, you know? I I am yeah. not saying we're going to do that. I'm just going to say no. these are the different levels, and one of the uh -huh. levels would be yeah, you can do a deck, but we want signed letters from all adjacent neighbors saying they're they're okay with the deck. Yeah. Yeah. for its approval yeah. so like Agreed. you did and commending mm -hmm. commending you for what you did but we see so many occurrences of people requesting decks that mm -hmm. are oblivious to their na the impact of those decks on their neighbor's privacy yeah so i, I see uh, i see uh, the you know the, the major factor is the lack of communication or or you know there's no communication we've seen a lot of, you know quite a you know um a number of times uh there was virtually no communication or the neighbors say we never receive anything or they didn't you know never get our comments reflected on the drawing <laughs> right so yeah I, I think that um yeah okay so i think these are all really good comments mm -hmm. I, I i would say you know the city's fortunate to have council member in ander because she has development background but for the most part my experience with city councils is they don't they don't have as much development background as other uh, commission. So out of these eight, I guess, you know, it, it's up to the commission. We can present all eight or if there's a preference, if people want to say, hey, I really want to focus on, you know, one, two and three or two, four and six. I don't know if you guys want to do that chair ma, or if we want to just present all of these, that's, that's really up for the DRC to decide. Mm -hmm. um, I go for all. Like with the deck issue, it might be better if I work with you guys and we propose some changes to the code and then um, pitch that to the council later on in the year. Because they're probably looking to you guys as the experts to say, mm -hmm. hey, this is how. Um, anyway, so I'm just pointing out just so. Yeah, go? I. Mm -hmm. Go ahead. We don't, um, can I just say something? Um, I understand what you're saying, and I think that would might be true on more than one thing on this list, but I still, for me, right. I think the council would welcome seeing the whole list, even okay. if what you want to say is, we, we are prepared to work on this one, this one, and this one, because we think that you're going to want some more information before, you know, we're not asking for direction or concurrence or whatever, we want to work on these other ones first, these first. But I still think it'd be great to have kind of a heads up for the council that these are the things you've surfaced. Okay, sounds good. Sounds good. Okay. And, and I'm not going to tell you what to do. I'm just for me. Yeah, yeah. So that's up to the chair, and we can present all or not. That's, Absolutely, that's... it's completely up to the commission. Yeah. So. Okay. Yeah. Open for discussion. Uh, suggestion uh, to all commissioner. Send them all in. Okay. Yeah. All right. I agree. Yeah. Okay. No problem for me. All right. Yeah, so I, I'm just saying this is the opportunity for us to relay to what we see on a, you know, weekly or by 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 monthly, uh, semi monthly. I don't know what the term is, but uh, basis. These are every the things other, that commonly every other week. come up, right? So I think yeah. we just put it out there. And we're not, we're going to attack all of them, but these are the things that we continue to see that, you know, as the code, maybe the code needs to evolve, maybe it doesn't, but that's something that the council should be aware of. And I think this is our opportunity. So putting it all out there is to me makes sense. I don't think we should dwell on anything individually, but uh, just let them know what's going on. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Hey, Guido, the, um, this is Sam, the, um, is this evening with the council more than just the DRC? I believe so. There was like a whole list of the commissions that. Yes, are it's that. it's okay. half of half of the commissions. I don't know if there's. I think there's okay. four on the list, but I'm not positive. So, do we have a time slot? Not yet. Oh, okay. But you will. You'll you'll, you'll have a an estimated time of when this commission will be on. I know that finance is on the same night as well, and and I was on last night with them, and and we just don't have a schedule yet. So sorry about that. Okay. But well, we're gonna see. Guido, you'll send right? us something with the logins and so yeah, forth. Yeah. So just piggybacking off the of council member and Andrew. So, um, 
I don't have a time slot, but February 2nd, I do have DRC for that meeting. And you guys are first one on the list, at least that I've seen. Okay. Um, but to council member and Andrew's point, I don't have a, but as soon as I find the time slot, I'll, I'll let the commission. Okay. Okay. Because right. we have a meeting the next night too. And, and Guido, to go back to the um, comment you made about, and thank you for the compliment that there, well, Sally and I both have a, a bit of a clue. Sally, even more so since she served on this commission for several years. Um, right. You might want to revise slightly or, or add a little bit to some of these comments to really make it more obvious what the issue is. Because I look at these and I know what you mean. But anybody who's never had anything to do with design review commission or development of houses or second story issues may not really get it. Right, right. So try and get a naive view of, mm. of the words. Of course, absolutely, absolutely. Yeah, so the way this will work is uh, the city clerk circulated uh, the draft work plans for each commission and then each staff person was supposed to say how those work plans were met and then I've prepared uh, three or four slides that just highlight the work plan and then I'm going to I'm going to drop these into some slides um, and then I will send this to I'm not sure which of the if all the commissioners are going or not but I'll just I'll, I'll send it to everybody and whoever shows up that night can can present the okay. PowerPoint okay all right yeah it's always impressive the more people that show up. Okay, sounds good. Yeah. All righty. Well, I will send this on to the group and then I'll put it into my PowerPoint and, and to Commissioner uh, Councilmember. I will try to, you know, take out the planning jargon. So. Okay. All right. All right. Um, Thank you. All right. Before uh, before we adjourn, um, our next um, DRC. It's uh, on. February 3rd, right? We're after the council yes. meeting. Yes. yes, we do. Okay. All right. Okay. Any question? Um, Otherwise, oh. um, okay. So meeting adjourned. Good night, right. everyone. Thanks. Everybody. Okay. Thank you. Everybody. Thank you. Well. Thank you. Bye. Right. Sleep well. Bye.